Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Um, I greet you today with Jesus' joy. I am Pastor Lonnie, your sister, your girl, your auntie, your niece, here with the um, 49 commands of Jesus Christ. Today we are on command number 11, y'all. Sorry for the delay today. I had some classes and stuff to get on this morning, and so I have been fed spiritually. Amen. And I'm excited um, about sharing today's command with you. Now, this is one that we get so twisted and we believe that it means one thing, but it is totally not what we think um, God is looking for us to take it one day at a time. Amen. And so today's command, command number 11 is be perfect. Matthew 5 verses 46 to 48. And the word of God reads, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you on, if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Amen. Amen. And so when it refers to the tax collectors and it refers to the Gentiles, it's saying just the regular everyday, you know, run-of-the-mill people. Don't the people that are you amongst every day, don't they do the same thing? What makes you stand out above the rest as a believer? And it is Jesus Christ that makes us stand out. It is his nature and his character. I'm going to keep on saying it. That flows from us. That makes us stand out. That makes us perfect. Amen. Excuse me. And so that perfect doesn't mean flawless. It doesn't mean without error. It doesn't mean that, you know, everything with you is absolutely right. It means mature. It means complete in various different applications in, in, in your work, in your growth, your mental, your moral character, all the way around that you are totally um, well-rounded and balanced, amen, um, in your life, that that mature love that you're using or that that um he's referring to that perfect love amen um is is the love of god it is that agape love it is that forgiving love it is that empathetic compassionate love it's the love that puts yourself in somebody else's shoes before you judge them it's a love that um is 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 quick to forgive but slow to anger it is a love that takes the second step, amen, it goes beyond saying, I, I, you know, I forgive you, but that forgiveness that you said is followed by an action, amen. And so that I don't just forgive you, but I treat you as if you never did anything wrong. That's what God does with us. Well, us, God says, you know what? When I cast your, seat, your sin into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west, never to remember them again. We remember them. We keep bringing them up to God. But when we ask God for forgiveness, he forgives them and we're done. We're the ones that keep on remembering. We're the ones that keep on bringing it back up. And God be like, what you talking about? I already get, forgave you for that. To move on, you know, get over yourself and move on. Amen. And so that perfect love, that mature love um, that he talks about, be ye perfect. It is a maturity. It is the maturity that allows you to turn the other cheek. We striving. No, we're not striving. We're not striving to do anything. We're surrendering and we're submitting to the Holy Spirit to do the inner work in us. Amen. And so that mature love, amen, that perfect love, that be ye perfect as your father in heaven is, is perfect. Um, the Bible tells us that mature love in first John 4, 18, that there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear hath torment and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Listen, when we're walking in fear, when we're afraid, to do what God has called us to do, that is not perfect love. How do we say we love our family members, we love our friends, we won't share the gospel, we won't minister the gospel, we won't give them the perfect love we're afraid to share because we're worried about, you know, what they're going to think about us, how they're going to judge us, oh, they're going to think I'm, I'm a holy roller or, you know, whatever it is. Or sometimes it's guilt and shame and condemnation. The enemy is telling you, you know, you're not worthy, you can't tell them nothing. Look at you, look at your life, look at what you're still doing. But listen, the gift of God is awesome. Amen. And the gift of God, it is, it is healing. 
and it is um it is available and we have to tap into that and we can't be worried about people can't be worried about how people going to judge us what people going to think what people going to say we just have to give that that mature love amen and listen the mature love doesn't try to force it down people's throat when people it, it says what god told you to say and then it keeps on moving sometimes that mature love just tells us to shut up when we you know when we want to speak that mature love is 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 not um that be ye perfect that mature is not um it's not um uh I just lost my train of thought I'm sorry just that fast it's not um um <sighs> It can it, it can resolve racism like so many different things that that perfect love does amen it 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 just it it goes above and beyond amen it takes the extra step it has compassion and so much but in the same token that there's a perfect love and i kind of tossed around i wasn't going to talk about this but i can't be intimidated i have to go with you know revelation god speaks to us all and so i got to go with the revelation that god gave me on this because i think that is very important um because god like we said god is a balanced god and so just as there is perfect love love that mature love there's a mature hate um there's a perfect hate oh my goodness when i was studying i found this i was like oh my goodness but i'm gonna share my revelation and listen i'm open to talk about it if you don't agree i'm open to talk about it doesn't mean that i'm gonna change you know what i feel like god spoke to me but listen we could definitely have conversation and so psalm 139 verses 21 to 24 says um don't i hate them O lord that hate thee and am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Listen, a perfect, uh, perfect hate hates what God hates, you know, and, and let me be very clear on this. It, I, it it says, I count them my enemies. God is the word of God, you know, um, is not talking about the person. It is not talking about people. The enemy is the spirit behind the behavior. Remember, God loves the sinner. It's the sin he hates. And so the spirit behind the sin, the spirit behind the enemy, um, be behind the um, behavior, that is the enemy. It is not the person. Remember, the Bible tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but a powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness, a high place, like all of those things. And so the person is not the enemy. It is that spirit that's driving, whether it be that spirit of pride or lust or whatever that spirit is. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. It all falls under one of those. Amen. And so we have to make sure that we are balanced in that. Yes, we have a perfect love, but there is a perfect hate that is there also. It is a mature hate. It's a mature that doesn't go after or attack the person, but it is a mature hatred that actually prays for the person, which takes us back, you know, to, to earlier in the week um some of our lessons loving your enemies amen um uh, praying for those that 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 persecute you and despitefully use you different stuff like that that is you know perfect love and perfect hatred amen and so listen we have to have that balance in order for us to be totally submitted and and truly um um, 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 surrender to God. We have to hate what he hate because if we don't, we will fall prey to it because the enemy will use those temptations. And so when God hates it, we have to decide that we hate it too. You know what? Make up in my mind and I don't care what's going on. And as you're walking through and walking out your deliverance, listen, just keep reminding yourself you hate that thing. I did that with cigarettes. I re you know, when I really, really got to the point where I really wanted to quit, stop bouncing back and forth, I would literally smoke and say, I can't stand this this is so nasty this is disgusting and then one day i went to go light it and i was like this is so nasty and this is so disgusting and that was the end of it you know so sometimes you have to talk you know you you got to talk your way and speak your way and coach your way and coax sometimes you have to encourage yourself donald lawrence never got it wrong with that song and so with this perfect love and with this um um being being ye perfect as our father is perfect being mature in our um love being our, even mature in our hatred being mature in how we deal with our relationships i'm going to leave you with this
James uh, 1 verses 2 through 8. Um, and we talked about this last week when we talked about um, counting it all joy, you know, and rejoicing when we're going through trials. And so he says, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, that as your as your faith is being tried, patience in you is being developed to be still and note that I am God, to wait on the Lord and to be of good courage. Amen. And our patience is being developed so that we learn how to surrender to the Father and to watch and wait for his hand um, and his will and his work to come to pass. Um, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience, but let patience have her perfect work, her mature work, her complete work in you, that you might be perfect, that you might be mature, entire, complete, wanting nothing, that you lack nothing. Why? Because you're mature. You know that God would withhold no good thing from you. Amen. You know that if you just be still and wait on the Lord, that he's working all things together for your good. Amen. You know that when you're going through trials and tribulations, you know that everything that the enemy intended for evil, God is going to work out for for the good, why? For the, for the um, saving of many lives. So you are able to sit and you await and you lack nothing. You have peace. You have joy. I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about spiritual things. You lack nothing. And when you lack nothing spiritually, you lack nothing naturally. Amen? Amen. And so he says, you know, that is the purpose. Our purpose of the work that I'm doing in you. That is the purpose of faith. That is that you might be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect, that you might be mature. Amen. And so let's grow up in Jesus Christ. Let's learn how to be mature, maturely use the word of God, not as an attack, not as a uh, criticism to tear people down, but the word of God is used to edify and to uplift and to build the believer. Amen. He says, um, and um that that it that the um fivefold ministry remember yesterday in Ephesians um four and eleven I'm gonna show y'all something real quick while I'm on here while I'm doing this because I'm gonna go to that scripture and I promised y'all that I would do this so I'm gonna do this real fast I'm not at the fifteen minute mark so I'm I got a minute I try to keep these short so that you can do this but I think that this is a helpful tool so don't mind my cracked screen on my iPad because the baby you know he he always got the iPad it's been cracked for a while though and it ain't. It wasn't him that cracked it, so I'm not going to blame it on him. Um, and so here's my Bible. Um, I don't know if y'all can see it. I'm going to turn it up like this. And so this is my um, Bible app that I have on my phone, uh, on my iPad. I also have it on my phone. And down here at the bottom, um, you see this little search magnifying glass down here at the bottom. And so whenever I want to find something with a scripture, right, I, something comes to my mind or I'm dealing with something and I want to know what God and the word of God says about it. I go to this little magnifying search down here. I'm, I'm not really good at this stuff, y'all. Um, you see it right there. And I'm going to try to look at the camera, right? I do that and look what pops up. It pops up and I go up here in this top up here. And I'm just going to type um, perfect. You see, it's already the I was doing my search yesterday, right? And so once I type perfect up there, you see that? Um, now I have all of these scriptures that come up that have the word perfect in it. And so now I could do a whole scripture study search. I can, and sometimes I don't have to go in depth. Sometimes I just sit and I just read these scriptures that are right here. Just scroll through them, you know, and if you want, you can, you tap on them. You know, and now it brings you here and it, you got options and it, it lets you know, okay, listen, you can read the full chapter and now it takes you to the chapter and now you can get that whole word in context. You can read exactly what he was referring to because... Um, remember that, um, in the Bible back then they had a whole lot less words. The Greek alphabet is, you know, it, the vocabulary is not extensive as, wasn't as extensive as it is now in the English, um, language. And so one word could have various multiple meanings. So when you read in the scripture, you have to make sure that you're reading it in context, that you're reading it and you're understanding that what that word means for that specific scripture. This is how we get the word twisted and confused. And so, um, 
Also, if you want, you know where you want to go, you just go down to that little read button at the bottom, brings you to your Bible up here. Now you can do your search and I'm going to go to Ephesians. I'm going to go to Ephesians 4 and it takes me right there. And so the scripture that I wanted to tell you about, it says, uh, um, um, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. I know the scripture by heart. I don't know why I kept getting stuck. Um, for what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the maturing of the saints. Listen, church is not to go to hop and scream and jump up and down and shout and yell. We go there to edif to be edified and to edify each other, to be encouraged and to encourage one another. We bear one another's burdens. We pray for one another. This is the reason that God gave it. So, you know, get there on time. Respect praise and worship. Respect prayer. Respect every aspect of it because it is to make you complete, totally furnished unto all good works for God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank y'all again for coming on today. Today's command can um command number 11 be ye perfect. Amen. As your father in heaven is perfect. Be mature. Now, if there's anybody out there that says, you know what? I feel like it's time to grow up. I've been running from God long enough, or, you know, um, I've been holding this grudge and it's time to let go of the offense. I got offended by God, you know, in the church at some time. And you know what? I think it's time to let it go because I really feel God pulling the tug on my heart. I'm, I, I, um, offer you Jesus Christ today. And, um, it's as simple as praying the simple prayer, just inviting him into your heart and surrendering your life to him, asking him to fill you with his Holy Spirit and you letting go and letting God take control. Amen. So if that is you today, just pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for your patience with me, God. Thank you for your desire to make me perfect like you are perfect. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sin, that he was buried, and on the third day, he rose with all power in his hand. And that same power, hallelujah, that helped him get up from the dead, you can um, put in me and bring me alive in you. And so I ask you to fill me with your spirit, oh God. Do something new in me that you might get the glory. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now say it. I am saved. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We rejoice with you. We celebrate with you. Find a good Bible-based church where you can learn the word of God. You're always welcome to join us at Kingdom Christian Cultural Center, virtually online, Facebook, um, YouTube, uh, we are K uh, Facebook and Instagram, we're KCCC Yonkers, that's three C's, KCCC Yonkers, um, on social media. You are welcome to join us Sunday mornings virtually at 10 a.m., um, drive-in church at 301 Palisade in Yonkers, Palisade Prep parking lot on Sundays at 1130. You can join us Tuesday nights um, at 7 p.m. for Bible study, but where you are, where God has planted you, find a church that you can serve and give God back all of the gifts and talents that he's given you. Amen. Amen. I thank you guys so much for joining me today and taking the time out to listen. I'm really, really, really enjoying these and I'm pushing my way through to make sure that we, um, we get through them. Uh, and so I just ask that you continue to keep me in prayer as I do these, um, because you know, the enemy is not happy. Um, but I don't care. My goal is to glorify God. Take a moment to go visit my website, faith at LLC.com, um, where you'll be able to get my book, the possibilities of God, 21 of 21 days of faith devotional. Amen. Um, that, uh, I've been getting really good feedback. It has been a blessing. Um, I just got my new dominoes out there. Prayers now, blessings, later dominoes, um, that I'm making by hand that you can order um, online. You can also personalize them. Um, I have my scented candle line that I just launched that is starting to really um, do well. Uh, Lit Faith Candles. All of this is on my website and you can take a look at it. Um, and I just pray that you're blessed. I, I, I want to um, go back to God empty. When, when I leave this earth, I want to know that everything that he's poured into me and that everything he put into me to sow and to give, that I have poured that all out while I was here on earth and I go back to the master empty. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you for another day, opportunity, oh God, another chance um, to 
dive into your word. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that this word that is in in our heart, hidden in our heart, God, um, help us not to sin against you, that we might grow and be mature in you, oh God, in our words, our thoughts, our deeds, um, our actions, Father, in our prayer life, in everything that we do, Lord, that you would get the glory out of it. Now we ask that you would order our steps on this beautiful, sunshiny day, oh God. Let your son lead the way in our lives and in our hearts. Let us love like you love, oh God. Open up opportunities, Lord, for us to love those um, that they might know you and experience you and choose you today. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, when all else fails, you still have to faith it. Have a blessed day.